Hi, I'm Bill Sargas, and uh, in this video, we're going to talk about shooting a tennis match, shooting tennis, and talk about some of the compositional considerations, some of the how the sport uh, operates, and then we'll go into camera settings at the end for those of you who may be utterly new to sports photography. Um, if you're into sports photography and you've done sports photography before, but you've never shot tennis, what can you expect from the match? And we'll do that first, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of your compositional uh, ideas, some things that are op options that you have for that. So what can you expect from a tennis match? Well, there's uh, uh, games, and games create sets, and then sets create a, a match. So game, set, match. Uh, is, is, is the way it goes. So you win a certain number, it depends on the place where you're playing, how what your level is, how many of what you'll play, how many uh, sets, how many match, you know, whatever is in a match. So all that to say, a game is service and return, and the person serving uh, will, will hit the ball over the net, and then the person on the receiving side of the net will hit the ball back. You probably have seen tennis on um, TV. Now what, what you may not recognize is that, that, that periodically they will switch from one side to the other and that is a compositional factor. We're going to get into that in just a second. So that's how, how it plays. If it's a team sport as it is in high school, uh, there will be matches going on on all kinds of different courts. So if you're just trying to get a couple pictures for the paper, you can show up, find the, the, the top players, go take a couple pictures and be, be on with it. If you're trying to record for the tennis team, all of the players doing their thing, you'll be there for a while. And uh, you'll, you'll wanna try to you know, get, get pictures. You're gonna have to plan on who's facing which way. So that's the, that's the first consideration. So game play, service return, service return, game. Uh, at some point they sw swap sides of the court, service return, service return. Um, and then it ultimately it'll, it'll come down to moving on, you know, through the match that way. All right, composition. Most of the time, I'm inclined to try to shoot into the face of the player that I'm trying to record. Um, getting side shots in, in my situation is, is very difficult because of the, the way the courts are laid out and, and you're not, I'm not allowed to get on the court. Uh, the officials will not permit that. Uh, I can go on the court during warm-ups, which it looks like warm-ups. Um, they usually aren't wearing, they're usually still wearing warm-up jackets or they're, um, they'll have things marking places on the court where they're trying to, so warm-ups look like warm-ups. Uh, you can sometimes get an isolated player. So the opportunity to take pictures, this is for me the big challenge. Um, during the match, I have to shoot through the chain link fence. Now there is a, a sweet spot in the chain link if you get the right distance and the right angle and the right um, telephoto, uh, sometimes that chain link fence will almost completely disappear. And you, you, can, you can get some decent shots through the chain link fence. Not fun, but, but you can do it. So since I'm trying to shoot faces, I need to pay attention to who's where in their match and who's facing which way. And I end up going from court to court to court to court until I have captured you know, all the people that I'm trying, trying to get pictures of. Uh, so that is one consideration, is shooting through the fence. Now, what are you looking for? Uh, what are the compositional, iconic pictures? I feel like the service is pretty iconic, and that is actually very easy to, to, to shoot because you can anticipate when it's gonna happen and where it's gonna happen. The player isn't gonna be running side to side trying to serve. They're usually, I've never seen a player that didn't. They start off somewhere behind the line, they will do their motion and they will you know, hit it with the racket. So it's easy to anticipate. Uh, you wanna, I, I generally wanna compose that vertically. So I wanna move my focus point pretty far down to the bottom of the, of the focus options that I have on the vertical composition and I'll put that on the face or chest, whatever, uh, if the depth of field is sufficient because you're gonna be outside, you can run your depth of field up pretty thick and, and you can capture the ball, the racket. The racket is gonna be pretty far over the player's head. So the center of the composition uh, kinda is gonna fall somewhere in this area because of legs and racket and arms. And if you're trying to get the ball, the ball is gonna go even higher. So. You'll have to play around with your composition, figure out where to put your focus point, 
and um, you can always manually focus to that that distance um, if you feel like you can handle that and so there is one is the, is the serve so service is, is also is, is pretty easy to to capture the the second easiest thing to capture is the first return the first return the, the player will be uh, behind the, the, the box, the service box, and they will be anticipating the serve coming to them. And the, the serve has to go into the service box, so that first return, the player is, is gonna be pretty easy to, to locate, and they're gonna move left and right to some degree until they can make that, that return uh, play. Uh, so so they're, they're not all over the court. They will hit the ball back, and then the server will hit the ball back. Now, if your if your player that you're trying to take is on the far court returning the service, the second shot after the service return could be anywhere. So, getting that first return, getting the serve, th those are are fairly easy uh, to to anticipate. After that, it's just kind of like what else? A couple of strokes that you want to look for. They have something called a forehand, where the the ball is on the the player's dominant hand side of the body and they'll hit it that way. Then there's a backhand where the ball is on the opposite to the dominant side and you want to, they'll want to hit it from the backhand. A lot of times they'll do a, a two-handed two -handed backhand return. Uh, the, a lot of players are doing that now. Other than that, um, you're, you're looking for the, the side story. There's, there's more to it than just the match itself. There's going to be the, the Gatorade, and there's going to be uh, stretching, there's going to be maybe taping up an ankle, things like that that are part of the story that you may or may not be able to, to capture on any, given, um, on any given match. So that's it. That's, that's pretty much tennis. Um, uh, the, there, there's, a lot of pictures are going to look very similar. There's backhands, there's forehands, there's services, there's an overhead stroke that is not part of the service, but it looks like a serve, except they may be, you know, closer to the net. If you can get uh, some net plays so where they will volley at the net, where they will hit the ball back without letting it hit the, the court, um, that makes an interesting picture. And you can probably sometimes in that case get the net and the player. If you can get to the side of the court, then you've got a whole new set of, uh, of options. Uh, and in one of our courts, where usually where our top players play, uh, again on the side, you have to be very careful not to distract the players. That's, I guess, my last uh, comment about composition. Where you go and when you move, try to not move during the, the service and the return. Uh, while they're picking up the ball and getting ready for the service, that's when you can change location. So try not to be a distraction uh, with, with that. Uh, so there is uh, there's your composition. Let's talk a little bit about the camera setup. Uh, we talked a little bit about focal point. If you're going to shoot horizontal, like if they're doing a backhand or a forehand, you want to probably go to the bottom of the horizontal part on your, on your uh, focus options. If you're doing vertical, again, t um, probably more to the bottom, uh, and, and unless you just know for a fact that this is the shot that you're going to get, and I'm going to put the focal point in a certain place. If, you're, if you know the sport that well and you know your camera that well, you're probably not watching this video. So, uh, and, I, and I say bottom because uh, putting the, the focal point maybe a little off-center to the bottom horizontally is going to give you some of the, the space above their head. If you, if you happen to move the focal point up uh, higher onto their body, you can get some of the above the, the, the head shots as well. Um, if, if you know what you're doing, you might want to do like a center focus and just stick it on the chest. Or if you're, if you're pretty good and about after you get a feel for the sport, move it on up and put the focal point on their face. That would be your optimal uh, situation. But you're going to have to kind of get a sense of how things are going to go. All right, so there it is, focal point. Set your camera up. Uh, you want... You want a, a, a high shutter speed. So how you feel comfortable setting that up. Um, I teach young photographers, go ahead and just put your camera on um, the, the shutter priority mode. Run that up to 1,500 or 2,000. It's outdoors, probably daytime. Uh, if you are shooting under the lights, you're going to have to adjust your ISO and your, and your shutter speed to get you know, that, that good quality picture that you're going for. Um, if you're shooting manual, um, then you're probably not watching this video. You probably already know what you're doing. Or you probably stop watching when I quit talking about composition. 
So setting your camera up for sports, um, for beginners, I recommend setting it into a shutter priority mode, a thousand or higher. Um, if you don't know what else to do with your ISO, put it on auto and then let, let it pick the aperture, let it pick the ISO. I don't like to do that. I like to set my ISO and I'm probably gonna pick 400, 800, something, a good daytime ISO, maybe 1600. Uh, if the sun goes down and they turn on the court lights and I'm still there, uh, then I might have to adjust more like for an indoor sport. But I like to set my ISO and then set my shutter speed and let it pick an aperture. Uh, I just don't want to give up that much control. Uh, but you could. If you're a, a really, really a beginner, set your, set your ISO on auto, set your shutter speed on 1500 or 1000 or something in that range, 2000. Uh, see how it, how it plays out if it's not lower your shutter speed. Don't go below, don't go below 1,000 for tennis. Tennis is very fast. Uh, tennis is very likely could be besides baseball coming off the bat, the tennis ball coming off the racket is probably could possibly be the fastest thing in high school sports, maybe in any sport. Um, baseball coming off the bat may exceed that, but you're looking at 100, 100 something plus miles per hour coming off the racket sometimes. Uh, for top players. Um, so that's it. Um, high shutter speed, um, ISO that fits the circumstances. Lens, I'm going to try the 70 to 300 today. Um, I, I, I used a different telephoto last year. Uh, sometimes I felt like I was crowded in and I think the 70 might crowd me a lot. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. If not, I'm going to take, I have a, another really uh, nice lens. It's a, a 2.8 uh, um, 28 to 135, which would definitely give me that closer range. I'm not sure if it would give me the telephoto that I want, but I'm going to take both those lenses. But I'm going to start with the 7300 and see what that looks like. I feel like the 70 might crowd things in just a little bit. Um, definitely cannot get all the way through. I'm shooting on a crop sensor camera as well, so that 300 is like really 410, so that's that is uh, really, really close, but nice telephoto. Zoom lens will give you more composition options. If you don't have a zoom lens, use the lens you got. Someone um, you know, said at, at one point, what lens should I use? You should use the lens that you have. Um, if, you, if you've got a, a, an 18 to 55, that's the lens you have. Don't miss the shot because you wish you had a different lens. Get the shot, get the lens later. All right, so that's it for shooting tennis pictures. I've been dropping some pictures in along the way. These are uh, pictures I, I took um, that I'm gonna go take. And um, hopefully uh, they've given you some ideas about composition. Uh, I blurred them out because of confidentiality of uh, people. I know it's they're outdoors in public and all that stuff and their public performance and all that copyright stuff, but I like to play it safe and I just blurred the pictures out. I blurred the faces out. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, my channel, I have a lot of motivational, inspirational videos. I also have done quite a few tutorials now, uh, and I've kind of got this little thing going with how to shoot different kinds of sports. So if you have another sport in mind, check that out. Coming up in future videos, I got baseball slash softball. I'm going to talk about that in a, in a future video. And uh, that's all for this one. See you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Thanks. Thanks for watching.